Uh, hi, I'm Oindrila and I'll be presenting my paper on uh, learning with multitask adversaries using weekly labeled data for semantic segmentation in retinal images. So uh, our main aim in this uh, work is that given a retinal fundus image, we should, uh, we should be able to uh, segment out all the uh, pathologies and anatomies of the retinal image using a single segmentation network in an end-to-end -end manner. So the main challenge in this task is that uh, we have a lot of data sets that uh, uh, together they have all the classes annotated, but no one data set has all the uh, classes, that is all the anatomies and all the pathologies annotated. So uh, to form an end-to-end network which will be able to segment all of these uh, six, seven classes, which are the retinal vessels, the optic disc, and the diseases, we need to use more than one data set to train our uh, segmentation network. So this is the context of the weekly label data that I'm talking about. So prior art in this uh, field is that uh, f uh, like for segmenting out all of, the, all of these uh, six classes, there, there is a classical method. That is, it goes uh, in a step-by-step -step manner. So first, it will segment out the high-intensity uh, diseases. Then it will go to the dark lesions and then uh, segment out the optic disc uh, and so on. So it's, uh, it's not an end-to-end method. And uh, in deep learning based methods, there's uh, no single method that has, uh, uh, that has segmented out all of these classes in, uh, in using just one segmentation network. So the first, uh, the first paper, it, uh, it uses the CNN for segmenting out the retinal vessels. It was uh, published in 2016. And then we have uh, uh, the next paper, which segments out the lesions, the diseases. And the next paper, they use a CNN and a, a conditional random field to segment out the retinal vessels. So none of these, pap none of these papers who have used uh, deep learning based methods have formed one single uh, method to segment out uh, all of vessels, optic discs, and the diseases. So the solution that we propose is that uh, for our use case, we have uh, trained using uh, two data sets. One is the drive data set and the other is the uh, IDRID. So the drive data set has only the vessels marked and the IDRID has the optic disc and four diseases marked. So we train our segmentation network using, uh, using an image from any one of the data sets and we uh, transfer between these data sets uh, after every epoch to uh, train our segmentation network. So we get C, uh, we have C classes, and we get C uh, ch channels in, in our segmented maps. We do a channel shuffling, which I'll be talking about later, and the motive behind it. And uh, so uh, we remove our background from, this, uh, from these segmented maps for all further computations. Uh, I'll be talking about why we do that. So our first discriminator, which is the novelty in our technique, is uh, the, the discriminator one, which tells me whether a class is present in the image or not. For example, uh, drive data set has optic disk present, but it's not annotated in it. So my discriminator one, irrespective of the annotations, will tell me that uh, drive data set has optic disk present. So this is helping me to learn from uh, another data set, the, uh, uh, learn a class from another data set for the data set where that uh, class is not annotated. So uh, the next discriminator uh, that we have, it uses the, it, it masks the segmented maps with respect to what, uh, with respect to the ground truth we have. That is, we and uh, we uh, mask those channels which we do not have annotated in a respect in, in in my respective data set, and then we do a shuffling and uh, feed it to the discriminator two, which is uh, which is the traditional discriminator. That is, it's the real versus fake discriminator. It tells me whether the input is, uh, like it discriminates whether uh, it's manual uh, or synthetic. 
So my discriminator one outputs a, a, a one hot a six length one hot vector n one. So here we have six classes, which are two uh, anatomies and four diseases. So it will uh, it will it should output one if that uh, class is present in the data set, irrespective of the annotations that I have. So uh, for this, uh, the uh, first clause that we use for the segmentation network is given an image. Uh, we find the uh, BCE loss. So my Y hat here is the, uh, is the segmented maps that I'm getting from the segmentation network. And Y is the ground truth that I have. So I, I find the BCE for all those channels where my ground truth isn't uh, null. So uh, for example, like in drive, I don't have the uh, optic disk marked. So I want to calculate the loss uh, for the class of optic disk. So this loss is then back propagated through the segmentation network. So, uh, so the moral behind, um, the motive behind channel shuffling is that, uh, like I said, uh, in the discriminator one, we are uh, saying like that discriminator is telling me whether a class is present or not, irrespective of the annotations. So if I don't uh, shuffle my uh, segmented maps, the, uh, the discriminator one will learn uh, with respect to the data set, whether uh, like the, uh, will learn the N1 uh, one hot vector with respect to the data set and not with respect to the segmented maps that I'm uh, giving as input. So I want my discriminator one to, see, uh, to look at the segmented maps that I'm giving and not the annotations to tell me whether uh, my segmentation looks as if it's uh, present in the uh, image. So it's just a, a description how uh, like before shuffling and after shuffling and I concatenate my input image with the segmented maps. So, so like I said, this, uh, we have uh, N1, a uh, one hot vector, and we find uh, binary decross entropy loss for N1 and N1 hat, and that is back propagated through the discriminator one. And the discriminator two, which is the, um, which is the traditional manual versus synthetic uh, discriminator, it, has, uh, it gives us output a uh, two length one hot vector, uh, so I'm shuffling the ground truth and the segmented maps. So it's just telling me like one is for manual and zero is for synthetic. So it's just discriminating between the two. So another thing that we do is we remove the background class from the uh, after we get the segmented maps from our segmentation network. We remove the background class. That is, uh, it's so because uh, if like the background is different for both of the data sets. Like for drive, as we don't, do not have the optic disk, uh, optic disk will be counted as the background. And for IDRID, because we don't have the vessels, the vessels go, uh, go into background pixels. So uh, we remove the background and we do all further computations uh, and also the binary cross entropy loss after removing uh, the background. So we, uh, we backpropagate both of these uh, discriminator losses. We add both of these losses and backpropagate it through our segmentation network. So these are some of the results. So uh, this is the images, uh, input fundus images that we have, and this is the ground truth that we have. So um, the ground truth is like for drive, we have the vessels, the, so that's what's shown here. And for IDRID, we have the optic disk and the diseases. And this is the prediction that we get. Also, we get the uh, prediction for the non-annotated classes. Like uh, for drive, we do not have the optic disk annotated. So, but still, using our network, we are getting the optic disk um, channel as, uh, as, a, as a class. And similarly, for IDRID, I'm getting the vessels. So we compared our, uh, our evaluation of the uh, optic disk and the diseases uh, with the IDRID leaderboard. So we, uh, so, uh, we perform quite close to what, uh, what results are there, uh, even though, like, even though our, our method is uh, segmenting out all of the classes and not, and not just a specific uh, segmentation network for optic disk collisions. 
So for vessel segmentation, uh, these are some of the results where we have the fundus image, the ground truth, and the prediction. And uh, I'd like to compare it with a technique that was uh, uh, like published in 2016, uh, which was deep vessel. So what we see is that uh, our method does not, like it does not uh, do the error of, uh, uh, of segmenting out the optic disc boundary as a vessel. So I think that is because uh, we have, uh, like we have six classes and optic disc is one of the classes. So we, uh, we also reduce false positives because we are se segmenting out all different classes together. So we compare our method to uh, some vessel segmentation techniques. So mostly, uh, like our method has performed better than many of the techniques that I went through, and uh, except one which was in uh, which was Meninis et al. So uh, the takeaway is that our method is performing uh, very close to uh, uh, close to these uh, other other state of the art segmentation networks. Uh, despite the fact that our, uh, that our uh, segmentation network is solving more than one problem, it is solving all of the, it's segmenting out all of the classes together. So, okay, so, um, so uh, in, the, in this uh, uh, prediction for non-annotated classes, we did not have the annotation for vessels for IDRID or for optic disk for drive, but so we could not compare the quantitative results for each of these classes. So we did an inference only experiment. For, uh, like for uh, vessels, we used the HRF data set and we used our trained model and did an inference for the images of the HRF data set. And it performed better than the initial uh, vessel segmentation uh, technique that these, uh, that the people who had published the data set had uh, uh, proposed. But it, it's uh, like, uh, we compared it to the uh, recent state of the art, so it's, it's really, uh, it's uh, performing near to tho those as well. So uh, we also did, uh, uh, did for the uh, hard exudates, which are these uh, high intensity pixels on the E of the data set. And we did for the optic disk, which is from the refuge uh, challenge data set, and we compared it with the refuge leaderboard. So the take home message is that existing methods, uh, they rely on uh, pre and post processing techniques a lot, and it, no uh, previous technique has done an end to end solution without the need for uh, manual feature extraction. And our method is providing a single solution for all anatomy and pathology segmentation. Also, uh, the main takeaway is that our multitask model uh, predicts classes that were originally not annotated in a given data set by learning from other data sets. Thank you.